Hello, welcome, I'm Savannah, and these are the five mindset shifts that took me from being an extremely messy person to a tidy person. Mm. The first mindset shift I wanted to share, this has had the biggest impact on the way I think about how I handle my home, which is thinking about my future self. Considering how I'm going to feel at the end of a long day, a long week, what can I do for myself to make my life a little bit easier, making my bed, hanging up clothes? And I love that the motivation for doing things and tidying things around your house is coming from a kind place and not just doing it because you have to or you should. It's similar to like your mom or your partner doing little favors for you. It's all those little things that can really add up and really brighten your day and brighten your life. And you can be that little cleaning fairy, that little magic fairy for yourself. For example, making my bed. I think I made my bed maybe twice a month for like 10 years. <laughs> These days I make my bed every day and it's not out of guilt or shame or fear of being lazy. Instead, it's because I'm thinking about my future self. I'm thinking about at the end of a long day, how delightful it will be to just jump in to a crisp white bed. Another one is restocking things like toilet paper, paper towels, food in your pantry. Instead of waiting for the last minute, running out of toilet paper constantly, I will now actually put toilet paper under my sink or whatever it is so that when I go to use it, when I need it, it's there for me. I'm thinking of my future self. So this next mindset shift has also had a profoundly positive impact on my life, which is knowing my limitations. We have to know our limits, you guys. If you feel like you are constantly underwater when it comes to managing and taking care of your home, you are not alone. And also, you are not the problem. I feel like often we put the blame completely on ourselves. We are only one person and there is only so much one person can manage, period. And it totally depends on, again, your circumstances of your home and then also your life stage. What's going on in your life? How much time and energy do you have to give right now? What's going on with work? Do you have kids? Do you have pets? Or maybe you're in a bad place with your mental health and realistically can't give that much to your home right now. What I recommend is zooming out and trying your best to set up boundaries and realistic expectations for you and your home. One example where I definitely know my limitations is when it comes to cleaning up toys. I only keep toys that can fit into this basket. We keep it in the living room. This is where we play. And if the toys overflow with the basket, they're getting decluttered. And for me, this just keeps me calm and patient. I know that if I spend more time cleaning more toys than this, I will just start building resentment towards my family and I don't want that to happen. Also with having less toys, I find my son plays longer, he uses his imagination more, and it's easier just for both of us. Another boundary that helps me is making sure that everything in my house has a home. For instance, my kitchen cabinets, my plates and bowls, all of these are just as easy to put back away as they are to take out. It makes things really simple for my family. It's self-explanatory and things pretty much always stay tidy. This next mindset shift is more of an emotional one, a personal relationship one, which is changing the narrative of how you view yourself. If you have always believed that you are inherently a messy person, I'm here to tell you that is not true. If I can change, truly anyone can. I think sometimes we forget that everything in life that we know how to do, we have learned, just like walking or riding a bike or learning to cook. If no one ever taught you how to cook growing up in your home, it's likely you don't really know how. Or if you do know how at this point, it's because you taught yourself, you learned, you watched the Food Network, you read some books and you got to that place. And I believe that tidying, cleaning, organizing is the exact same way. If you never learned how when you were young from your parents and in your household, it's likely that you don't have any pre-existing habits or routines to go off of. We all feel like imposters in some way, and I definitely had imposter syndrome when it came to taking taking care of my home. I felt like I just never knew what I was doing and that all of my processes were broken and just collapsing in on each other. And the real method, my recommendation to you, at least what worked for me, was fake it till you make it. So the thing that I started doing, faking it, was simply asking myself in a difficult moment and a moment with a task is, what would a tidy person do right now? And the answer was always very obvious to me. I just knew in my gut. For instance, cleaning a dirty stove after you cook, after you fry something, what does a tidy person do? Do they leave it for next week, for next month, once it all piles up? 
or do they just tackle it in the moment? I found that just tackling it in the moment, doing it now, it makes it so my kitchen always feels clean, it always feels nice, and then I'm prompted to cook more often and actually like being in my kitchen. And then there's the age old running out the door. You didn't choose to wear this sweater. Do you throw it on the ground, throw it on the chair, or do you take three to five seconds to hang it up? For me, I choose to hang things up now. All my clothes are in order. I have a better idea of my inventory. And overall, I have a more cared for, loved, well taken care of closet. This next mindset shift is to believe and know that you can have your dream space and your dream life. I got this from Marie Kondo's book, The Life Changing Magic of Tidying Up. She challenges you to imagine your ideal space and start writing down all the things about it. How does it make you feel? And be super specific with all of those details. And after you have this vision, this imagination of your dream life, ask yourself what changes in your life do you need to make to help make this dream a reality? And I don't know about you, but my dream for my life is something very, very simple. It's not adding more, more, more and buying stuff. It's really stripping things away, having less and being in the moment, being present so that I can think about and pursue all of my passions. One for me is having a clear space a clear counter to do my projects, to sit, edit YouTube, write, read, whatever I'm doing. If I have so much clutter in my life, if I don't have systems built in for like paper clutter, mail, etc., I wouldn't have this space, my happy place to work with. Or maybe it's imagining and creating your ideal space to come relax after a long day. What does that look like for you? Maybe it's a bath. What can you do to your space to create a zen environment? Is it decluttering out all those old shampoo bottles? Maybe it's doing a deep clean on your bathtub, lighting up a candle. Do what you gotta do to create your ideal space. The last mindset shift I wanted to leave you guys with is continue making mistakes. Mistakes are the learning lessons that teach us how to have a better hold, a better grip on our house moving forward. And I'm not better than I used to be. I'm not an entirely different person. I think I'm just a lot nicer to myself. I'm kind to myself. I have grace. I'm not so hard on myself in those moments being hypercritical. Instead, I'm able to take pause, take note of that situation, what I learned from it, and then take that learning with me, apply it to my life and I keep on chugging. Again, I'm not perfect, clutter collects, it's an ongoing thing, but I will say those situations pop up less frequently because I'm learning and growing from all of my mistakes along the way. For example, maintaining our pantry, keeping it open, clean, clear, and decluttered so that when we go to cook, things are really obvious. For example, knowing in my family which pasta they prefer. Is it the cauliflower? Is it the chickpea? I'm gonna say no. <laughs> Those are mistakes that I have learned from. Same goes for leftovers. My family doesn't eat that many leftovers. They often go into the trash. So what that has taught me is to cook smaller amounts, buy smaller amounts, and just know that the leftovers aren't getting eaten. Another mistake that I have made and learned from is owning too many books for my son. I know, I always thought, how could you have too many books? You want your kids to be enriched with all these stories and learning moments, but I had too many. They were getting strewn about my house. It was a crazy mess for me. Also, it was just too many choices for my son. He would get decision fatigue every time he went to pick out a book before his nap. So I have learned from my mistakes. I have pared down our books in a major, major way so that we only have books and stories that fit his current you know, reading level and we don't have so many that it overwhelms him. So those, my friends, are the mindset shifts that came to mind for me that have truly helped me have a more kind approach to taking care of my home and taking care of myself. Now I am much more aware of my capacity, my ability for what I can handle and get done. I don't set the bar so high that I'm always failing. Instead, I have brought it down to a level using my boundaries that is achievable for me so that I feel actually confident with myself and my home. And it's just been through reflecting, making mistakes, growing and keeping chugging along. So I would love to hear from you guys in the comments. What are the mindset shifts that you have made with yourself in your life, in your home? It could be like a mantra, a quote, a song lyric, anything that's really changed your headspace and given you a new view, a new perspective. I feel like sometimes it's just hearing words in a different order or a different idea that makes something really click. And these are just the things that have clicked for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope something resonated with you. I will catch you in my next video. Love you so, so much. Bye. Mm.